psoriatic arthritis. You may think of it as just joint pain that's associated with a skin condition known as psoriasis, but it's so much more than that. It's a chronic immune-driven condition that can lead to joint destruction, fuse the spine, and affect the whole body if it's not treated early. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 47-year-old female who came to her doctor with complaints of about a year of progressive lower back pain. Her back was really locked up in the morning, but as she began to move throughout the morning, it got better throughout the day. And x-rays of her lower back showed these little bone spurs at the level of each disc space. She was also diagnosed with the skin condition known as psoriasis just about five years ago. And about 30% of people that develop psoriasis can also have psoriatic arthritis. So I'm gonna give you the whole explanation of what it is, how we diagnose it, and how we treat it. It's a part of a family of arthritic conditions known as seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Spondylo what? It's a group of inflammatory conditions that typically affect the joints and the spine. Now we call it seronegative because we often run a blood test called rheumatoid factor to evaluate for something called rheumatoid arthritis, which you've probably heard of before. And the rheumatoid factor blood test in these conditions is negative, and that's why we call it seronegative. Other types of seronegative spondyloarthropathies include ankylosing spondylitis, in which I talked about last week, reactive arthritis, and enteropathic arthritis. And being a spine surgeon, these are conditions that I treat in my practice every single day. Now, the exact cause of psoriatic arthritis is not fully understood. We know it's probably a little bit of a mixture of genetics, immune dysregulation, and environmental triggers. Certain genes like HLA-B27 increase the risk of developing this condition. And this is a type of an autoimmune disease. I've talked about this many times, but your body's immune system, for whatever reason, begins to attack itself. So the immune cells in our skin and in our joints began to get inflamed because our body is attacking itself. This triggers a storm of inflammatory chemicals at these sites like TNF-alpha, IL-17, and IL-23. One of the hallmark features of rheumatoid arthritis is it actually caused bony erosion, meaning all that inflammation inside of the joints will actually break down the bone and the cartilage. But psoriatic arthritis causes bone erosion followed by bony formation. And that actually leads to something called syndesmophytes or bony bridging across the joint. And that's exactly what we're seeing on our patient's x-ray is there's bone formation across the disc and the disc is meant to move. So if you start to auto fuse your disc, guess what? Your back becomes stiff. Now, psoriatic arthritis doesn't look the same in every single patient. Some have a few swollen joints on one side of the body. That's called asymmetric oligoarthritis. In other patients, their disease will mimic rheumatoid arthritis with multiple joints that are affected. But the classic clue is to look at the distal joints of the fingers called the DIP. You can see here that those joints appear swollen and it's a classic finding in psoriatic arthritis along with looking at the nails. And here you can see pitting of the nails. And there's also something called dactylitis or sausage fingers where the entire finger joint gets swollen. And for some patients, the spine is the only problem that they have. Chronic stiffness that's worse in the morning and better as they walk throughout the day. And over time, because of that bony fusion, the spine becomes stiffer and stiffer. Now, here's the thing about the diagnosis, and we talked about this last week in ankylosing spondylitis. The diagnosis is often just clinical, backed by labs and imaging studies. In other words, there's no single magic test to make the diagnosis. We start with a history and the physical exam. We look for skin plaques, nail changes, joint swelling, and family history. Lab work will often show elevated inflammatory markers like the ESR and the CRP. Rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP are often negative. Imaging is important because it tells the bigger picture. We're going to look at the fingers. We're going to look at the patient's sacroiliac joints. And we're also going to look at the spine for evidence of bone spur formation. Doctors often use something called the Caspar criteria. It gives points for arthritis, nail changes, negative rheumatoid factor, dactylitis, and bony formation on imaging studies. Three or more points confirms the diagnosis. If left untreated, psoriatic arthritis can be very destructive. Joint destruction, spinal fusion, chronic pain, and disability. 
It can also increase your cardiovascular risk and of course can affect your mental health and quality of life. Treatment has two major goals, to stop the inflammation and to prevent joint damage. For mild cases, we often use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and that can help with pain and stiffness but it won't necessarily halt the progression of the arthritis. Rheumatologists, for the most part, treat and manage these medications, and they'll use something called a DMARD, which is medications like methotrexate, sulfasalazine, and leflunamide help that peripheral arthritis. And for more severe cases, there are biologics that can help change the game of treatment. That includes medications like TNF inhibitors, IL-17 blockers and IL-12 and 23 inhibitors target those specific inflammatory pathways. But medication is only part of the plan. Physical therapy, managing mobility, weight loss, stopping smoking are all parts for long-term benefit in these patients. Just remember that psoriatic arthritis isn't just a regular arthritis. It's an autoimmune systemic inflammatory condition. The earlier we figure it out, the earlier we can begin treatment to stop joint destruction and spine fusion. In our patient, she never associated arthritis with her psoriasis, so she didn't ask the right questions when she went to her doctor. We helped her make the diagnosis and sent her to rheumatology to begin her treatment. Of course, we did MRI imaging to rule out something concerning or surgical, and all of that was negative, at least for now. So we want to make sure that we begin conservative treatment, and more importantly, that she has her condition adequately treated. When she got to rheumatology, the diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis was confirmed. She was started on medications, and her spine pain has improved over time. If you or somebody you know has psoriasis and new joint pain or, or joint stiffness, make sure you talk to your doctor and ask the questions. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.